So hello everyone, I'm Hao Chen Liu from Michigan State University. In this, uh, in this talk, I will introduce our paper, uh, Rating Distribution Calibration for Selection Bias Mitigation in Recommendations. This work was done in cooperation with the Data Science and Engineering Lab at Michigan State University, uh, ByteDance, and City University of Hong Kong. Uh, the, rating uh, the rating prediction task is one of the basic tasks in recommender systems. Typically, to build a rating prediction model, we first collect the historical rating data, uh, the, hi the historical rating the users gave to items, and then fit the model on such collected data. And finally, we use the well-trained model to predict the unknown ratings so that we can recommend the items with high predicted ratings to, user, to the users. However, uh, recent studies show that the collected user rating data typically suffer from selection bias. Specifically, users can select which items to read by themselves. They typically don't select and rate items by random, but instead their selection behaviors follow some patterns. For example, some users are more likely to rate items that they strongly like or dislike. As a result, the ratings are not representative enough to reflect the preference of the users to all items, which can then mislead the recommendation model to predict too high or too low ratings for all items. Another equivalent expression of the selection bias is called the missing not at random. Uh, that is MNAR problem. Given that users select which items to rate by themselves, the unobserved ratings are not missing randomly, but are dependent of the underlying rating a user would give to an item. However, to learn an ideal unbiased rating model, we need to train it on miss at random data. Here are two figures showing the existence of selection bias in real-world dataset. In the uh, Yahoo dataset, researchers collected the five skill ratings user gives uh, give to music. The, the users are asked to rate music selected by themselves and also some randomly selected music. The two figures show the rating distribution on these two subsets of items. We can see that for the randomly selected items, there are a lot of low ratings, but for user selected items, we get a more uniform distribution. There are more uh, highly rated items and less lowly rated items in the user selected uh, subset. This means the users actually choose more items they like to read. So, their selection is biased. Here we use a simple and intuitive example to show how selection bias can lead to biased predictions. So here table A shows the underlying uh, preference of six users on six items. Based on certain selection behaviors, the six users select a part of items to read, which is shown in table B. Here, uh, the unobserved ratings are denoted as question marks. We assume there are three types of selection behaviors. First, user A and user D randomly choose items to rate. And second, uh, user B and C tend to choose the items they dislike to rate. And third, user E and F tend to choose the items they like to rate. So if we uh, fit a model on this observed data, the predicted uh, ratings are likely to be like this. Uh, so in table C, we can see for user A and D, since their rating data are missing and random, their historical rating data can comprehensively reflect their preference. So the model can learn to make accurate prediction. For user C and uh, user F, they are more likely to rate the items they dislike and like respectively. So uh, the models tend to predict more negative and positive ratings for them, 
respectively, which leads to errors in the predictions. And more extremely, user B only read, only choose the items he dislikes to read. And user E only choose the items he likes to read. Then as a result, the model less a significantly biased preference for them and tend to predict all the items as negative or positive. So it leads to a very poor performance. Previous methods to deal with the selection bias are mainly based on two ideas, data imputation and inverse propensity score. Some works introduced a data imputation module to estimate the missing data, where both heuristic and learning-based methods can be applied. Some works introduced a, prop a propensity estimation module to estimate the probability of observing the ratings and then use the estimated inverse pro propensity score to rebate the ratings during training. The previous methods have obvious drawbacks. Both of these two types of methods need to introduce additional models. The performance of the recommendation model heavily relies on the quality of the data imputation model and the propensity estimation model, which is hard to guarantee in practice. And also for the second method, uh, more data may need to be introduced. For example, some works use additional metadata to estimate the propensity score. So in our work, we seek to solve the problem of selection bias with a novel strategy. The original uh, recommendation model is trained by a supervised learning. But the subvision signals from the observed rating data are biased because of the selection bias. Thus, we want to introduce additional devised signals to correct the model. Here, we propose to introduce a self-supervised learning task to provide such subvision signals. Our method is based on two, ob two observations. First, different users have different degree of selection bias. For example, some users show strong selection bias, such as user B, who only choose the items he dislikes to read. And some users have no selection bias and their rating, uh, their rating data are almost uh, missing at random, such as user A. And second, uh, we find that the negative impact of selection bias on the recommendation model is directly reflected in its predicted rating distribution of a user. For example, because of the selection bias of user B, the model predicts a rating distribution where all the items are negative, which is largely uh, deviated from the real distribution, where uh, half are positive and half are negative. So based on these two observations, our solution is to introduce an SSL task to correct the predicted rating distributions of users with selection bias, uh, which we refer to, uh, which we refer to as non-pivot users, based on the distribution of similar users without selection bias, which we refer to as pivot users. Then to achieve it, we need to address three challenges. First how to find the, the pivot users. And second, how to extract the rating distribution features. And third, how to design the SSL task. So next I will elaborate uh, how we address these challenges. In our framework, we find the pivot users in this way. Uh, first, we, we know that a user with less selection bias is able to obtain more accurate predictions on missing and random data. Our intuition is that for users who have less selection bias in their observed training data, the model can better learn their preference. And those users can achieve better performance on the missing and random data. And in practice, we can collect a small amount of such missing and random data by for example, asking users to read some randomly selected items. So here we assume we have a missing and random rating set. 
R-O-M-A-R. And we, we can choose field users based on their performance on the rating set, R-O-M-A-R. We don't use a hard threshold of the performance on the M-A-R data set uh, to distinguish pivot and non-pivot users. Instead, we propose to randomly sample pivot users based on their performance on M-A-R data so that each non-pivot user is likely to get more diverse calibration guidance from different pivot users rather than a deterministic set of pivot, of pivot users. To be specific, specific uh, we introduced a, a newly variable DU to describe whether a user U is a pivot user. Here, the probability PU is determined by the performance of a of user U on the MAR dataset. Here, MAE indicates the mean absolute error of user U on the MAR rating set. Then the pivot user set P plus is sampled according to the Bernoulli distribution and the rest of the users uh, P minus uh, are treated as the non-pivot users. Then the next question is how to extract the rating distribution features. Suppose we have totally M items. Uh, we can collect the items predicted by the, use, by the model for user U for all the items. And we denote them as RU hat. To extract the rating distribution features, we can just calculate the frequency that the ratings fall into each interval. For, for example, uh, what percentage of the ratings is between one and two or two and three and so on. But the problem is that the distribution features calculated in this way are not, are not differentiable. So we cannot directly update the model by creating uh, back, back propagation. Uh, I mean, by gradient back propagation. So uh, we define the rating distribution feature in this way. Suppose we have k intervals uh, in our rating scale. Uh, we correspondingly define k features. For feature, for feature k, uh, it is defined in this way. For the predicted rating ru i height, we pass it through this function. Uh, so the shape of this function is like this. If ru i height is less than k, it returns a small number close to zero. And if it's larger than K, it returns a number close to one. Then we calculate the average values of all the items for user U to get the case feature. So the case feature shows the ratio of the items whose predicted ratings from user U is larger than K. So if the number of the feature K, uh, the number of the feature K is larger enough uh, the expected distribution feature GU is approximately uh, the cum cumulative distribution function, and it is differentiable. So next, how to design the SSL task? Given a non-pivot user U, we measure the rating distribution similarity between U and each pivot user U prime by calculating the Euclidean dis distance between them. And for non-pivot non user U, we define the SSL loss as the weighted uh, distance between the rating distribution features of U and each pivot user U prime, uh, where the, the weight is the, the reciprocal uh, of the distance delta one normalized by the by a soft vex function among all the pivot users. So in this way, the pivot users whose distribution are close to the non-pivot user U can get a higher weight and provide more calibration guidance. And similar to delta one, delta two is uh, another rating distribution distance function. We define uh, delta two the same as delta one in our work. That is the Euclidean distance. And finally, the overall SSL loss is defined as the average of the SL, SSL loss of all the non-pivot users. So the whole optimization process is shown here. 
Given a rating model, we first pre-train it on the whole observed rating set. And then in each iteration, we evaluate the performance of all the uh, M users on the MAR data set and calculate the probability of a user U of being a keyword user. Then we sample the keyword users according to the probability and get non-keyword users. For each non-keyword user U, we calculate the difference of the rating distribution between U and each uh, keyword user. Next, we compute the SSL loss and, uh, and the original uh, survived MSE loss respectively. And we update the rating model M by optimizing the overall loss, which is a weighted combination of the MSE loss and the SSL loss. Uh, so we repeated the whole process for multi iterations because as the rating model and get improved, more and more users can get good performance on the MAR dataset. Then we can have more keyword users to provide guidance, which will further improve the rating model. And the training will stop uh, when the model's performance on the validation set no longer improves. Next, we present our findings in the experiment. Uh, we conduct experiments on three datasets, Yahoo dataset, Code dataset, and a synthetic movie lens, one million dataset, which contains artificial MAR data and MAR data. We conducted the experiments on two base uh, recommendation models, matrix factorization and a neural uh, factorization machine. In the experiment, we compare our uh, RDC method with several existing devices method. We just compare the performance of the recommendation models on the different devices methods on the easy and random test data. The results on the uh, Yahoo coach and movie lens data set are shown in those tables. Uh, the results show that our prof Post method can outperform the vanilla model and the existing baselines uh, on the missing and random test data. And in this figure, we show the results of the parameter sensitivity analyzed. The tendency is the same for all the three data, uh, three data sets. The, the model achieves a higher MAE when uh, mu equals to zero. That is, the SSL loss is not used. The MAE decreases as uh, the weight of the SSL loss increases. And when the weight uh, reaches two, the MAE maintains stable. So this observation indicates that the SSL loss plays an important role in improving the performance of the model on MAR data. But it's not uh, the larger the weight of SSL loss, the better the performance. And for different tall, we find uh, the performance of the model is stable, which demonstrates that when tau changes in a reasonable range, uh, the model is insensitive to this parameter. And finally, we noticed that the models achieve undesirable performance when p is small. Uh, it's one, uh, for example, it's one or five. And the performance are good and stable when k is larger than 10. In fact, uh, the larger K is, the more accurately the rating distribution features can be represented. One K is uh, one or five is too small to extract enough uh, rating distribution features so as to calibrate non keyword users effectively. K equals to 10 is enough. And when it becomes larger, the improvement on the performance is limited, but the consumption of uh, the consumption of the computational resources will increase. And this is the end of the presentation. Here, I would like to thank Michigan State University, uh, ByteDance, and City CTU of Hong Kong for the collaboration. Welcome to check the papers for more details. Thank you for uh, thank you all for listening. If you have questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, we have time for, based on very quick, like one question, basically. I see there is a question in the chat, uh, which says interesting work, especially that different users have different degrees of selection bias. How do you compute the propensity scores of baselines IPS for selection bias? Which is a question I had as well. Are the scores related to the degree of selection bias? 
Okay, so I noticed this question. Uh, different users have different degrees of bias. How to compute the propensity score of baselines? Okay, so I think in the baselines, they, they proposed a, a propensity estimation score. Uh, I mean, they proposed a propensity score estimation model, which just used some metadata of the users and uh, the items to predict whether the, uh, how, how likely the user will read this item. Uh, I think they have some uh, meta information of the user, like his, uh, like the gender of the user, and other demographic attributes of the user, and they just uh, train the model on the observed data, uh, and yeah, when they apply in the uh, apply the model on other data, they just uh, uh, use the the well trained data to predict uh, probability. How likely the, the the user will raise this item, and they will use the use this probability as the propensity score to weight uh, this instance. So to to train, okay. yeah. Okay, so you train another model to uh, identify to compute the propensity score. Yes. Okay. Thank you.